from Dr. Seuss to the Muppets and broadcasters losing their jobs now for sharing their opinions on TV, we're witnessing really a growing movement in America to silence opposing minority voices via social media mobs. Now, a new New York Post op-ed is calling for Generation X to step up, put millennials in their place, and stand up to the cancel culture. Matthew Hennessy wrote that piece. He's also author of the book Zero Hour for Gen X, How the Last Adult Generation Can Save America from Millennials. So thanks so much for, uh, for joining us. You know, what's great in this piece is you say we're at this cultural inflection point where we are asking ourselves really at the national level if teenagers can... Um, look at Mr. Potato Head and still trans teenagers can still look at Mr. Potato Head and retain their sense of self-worth or if we can as adults still watch Gone with the Wind or read Dr. Seuss and also be committed to you know the pursuit of racial equality what's the answer? Uh, well the answer is uh, depending on the question yes or no these debates are incredibly stupid uh, that's what anyone who is above the age of 40 uh, would say that uh, you know, if you were raised in a time when the values of uh, the First Amendment and free speech were clearly taught and clearly understood and preached by adults who had faced down fascism and uh, threats like that, you wouldn't even be asking whether Mr. Potato Head uh, erased anyone's identity or whether Gone with the Wind was okay to watch. Um, you would have understood because you would have learned in school, as I did, that the purpose of the First Amendment is to protect speech that you don't like. And when we start down the road of of uh, policing speech that we don't like. We're going down a very dark road indeed. Yeah. Well, Matthew, here's the thing, though. Here's the here's the kind of the crux of your argument. The, the question that remains to be answered is major mega Hollywood celebs um, have not been able to stand up to the cult cancel culture mostly and survive. We have seen um, celebrities of the highest order here in the United States, across the pond in England, kind of try to take a stand like Piers Morgan recently did and fail. So what do you think imbues Generation Xer, Xers with like the power and the wherewithal to break through on this? What is special about them? Well, the special part about it is that we were the last generation, A, to grow up without the internet and B, to experience the Cold War in real time. So yeah. we watched movies, we learned on in, in school that the enemy was unfreedom. The enemy was the Iron Curtain. The enemy was the Soviet Union. And that helped us to understand why our system was better, why you don't lose your job because you have an unpopular political opinion, why you don't have to worry about your neighbors turning you into the speech police. Uh, somehow after the uh, Berlin Wall fell and the internet came along, we lost sight of that. Now we have an entire generation, maybe two, that doesn't see the value in letting a thousand voices speak or a million voices speak that has adopted that sort of East German Stasi view of, of speech, where if someone voices an unpopular opinion or holds to a, uh, uh, an, an outmoded view on, on this or that uh, woke orthodoxy, they need to lose their job. They need to be driven to the margins of society. And unless I was dreaming, I didn't grow up in that country. It wasn't yeah. that long ago. I think it's possible that we can get back there. If people who remember what it was like and who know why it's important that we live that way um, actually stand up for the values that they, they were raised with. So one of my favorite things you also say in this piece is essentially, you know, leave it to the younger generations, the millennials and the generation Zers, to kind of fight to change the world and make it a better place and control the world and the levers of world power. For folks like us, the Generation Xers who are in their 30s and 40s, we've come to realize power isn't really that worthy of a thing of pursuing. It kind of frees us up to focus on issues like this, on trying to, you know, promote freedom of speech for the rest of the country. We have a little more emotional energy. Well, we're at a very interesting stage. We're in the middle of our lives, and, and uh, the Internet came along when we were in our 20s, some of us in our late 20s, and sort of flipped everything upside down. The world we inherited isn't really the world we were expecting. And in yeah. the last five years, we can see that's accelerating at an accelerating rate, and things are getting weird fast. So if we don't sort of pump the brakes on some of this and sort of reassert ourselves, or reassert the, the sort of the values that, that, that shaped us and formed us in terms of uh, what we understand about the importance of our uh, democratic system and, and the, the, the levers that make it work and, the, and the, the gears that make it work and the values that make it work, 
that's going to be gone for our children. So the, the good news is that we're raising children right now. We're sort of in charge of Generation Z and whatever the generation yeah. is that comes yeah. next if we have children. So we have a chance to we have a chance to push back. We have a chance to sort of turn the tide. If we don't, I'm afraid things are going to get uh, real, uh, real ugly in 10 or 20 years time. And we may not recognize the country that we grew up in. Well, Matthew, thanks so much for taking time out to join us today. Loved the op-ed. All our viewers at home, check out the op-ed in the New York Post. Check out the book. Even more importantly, Matthew Hennessy, thanks so much. Thank you. you really, a really Bill. good piece there, Jillian. Just uh, yeah. reading it earlier today, I mean, it's a great source of debate that, awesome. that we can all have together. Uh, listen, got to run. Great to have you, Jillian. It is March.